China's economic record among the big nations is the best that ever existed in the history of the world. And that's very interesting. Charlie Munger, one of the world's most successful investors and the business partner of Warren Buffett, bought $37 million of Alibaba stock, China's largest e-commerce company, through the Daily Journal Corporation in the first quarter of 2021. This was Munger's first significant change to the company's $200 million stock portfolio in over six years, and with only six stocks in the portfolio, this represents a major investment for Munger. In this video, we'll explain why Charlie Munger bought shares of Alibaba using three of his investment principles as detailed in his book, Poor Charlie's Almanac. The first principle that Munger follows is assessing the risk of an investment. This means avoiding permanent loss before analyzing the potential return of an investment. When it comes to Alibaba, there's one risk that stands out in particular. The fact that Alibaba is based in China, which has a different regulatory and legal system than the US. This was seen in November 2020, when regulators halted the $300 billion planned IPO of Alibaba's financial technology business, Ant Group, while following up with a $2.8 billion fine in the coming months for anti-competitive practices. Since these two major regulatory events, Alibaba's stock declined over 30%, or $200 billion in market value. In addition, when investors buy Alibaba stock on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol BABA, they are not actually investing in Alibaba, but are instead investing in a complex business structure called a Variable Interest Entity, or VIE. A VIE is built upon a series of contracts between an offshore company and an onshore operating company, meaning, in Alibaba's case, shareholders don't actually have any ownership of Alibaba itself, which can lead to limited shareholder rights. This along with increasing accounting concerns for international companies, presents additional risks for investors. These risks are not to be overlooked, with a large number of investment funds selling their positions in Alibaba due to fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The different regulatory rules, the VIE structure, and potential accounting concerns could all potentially lead to permanent loss when investing. Despite these risks, it would appear that Munger believes that the potential reward to risk is high enough to justify an investment in the company. This brings us into Munger's second principle, analytic rigor. While this translates to an extensive investment research process, Munger emphasizes that it's better to remember the obvious than to focus too much on specific details. If we apply this principle to Alibaba, the investment thesis is pretty clear. Investing in Alibaba is a bet on one of the largest secular trends of all time, the rise of China's middle class. With hundreds of millions of people increasing their income over time, this leads to higher purchasing power, which leads to higher retail spending. This directly benefits Alibaba, who has the largest market share in China's online retail market. That being said, this is dependent on China's economic growth as a whole. China has a track record of high economic growth and is expected to continue rising in the coming years, despite its scale, and Munger has expressed this view on China through interviews and annual meetings. I think the Chinese have behaved very, very shrewdly in managing their economy, and they've gotten better results than we have in managing our economy. And, and I think that that will probably continue. Knowing this, Munger doesn't just talk about China and has in fact invested in the country before. For example, Munger bought a significant ownership stake in BYD, China's largest electric vehicle company, through both the Daily Journal Corporation and Berkshire Hathaway. Since Berkshire Hathaway's purchase in 2008, BYD's stock has increased over 10 times, making it one of Munger's most successful international investments. In addition to China, when analyzing a potential investment, Munger states to focus on the business itself and to not overanalyze the stock market and the company's stock. When we analyze Alibaba's business, the company has numerous growth opportunities and competitive advantages. In terms of growth opportunities, in addition to Alibaba's China retail businesses, Alibaba continues to expand internationally. It has a number of strategic investments in South Asia and Southeast Asia especially and continues to enter new regions. Alibaba Cloud is the other major business to focus on. Alibaba Cloud is the leading cloud computing provider in China with an estimated 40% market share, but is also one of the leading cloud providers in the world alongside Amazon's AWS and Microsoft's Azure. With cloud spending significantly lower in China compared to the US and China's increasing digitization, this serves as a major runway for Alibaba Cloud. Financial technology represents another growth opportunity for Alibaba through their 33% ownership stake in Ant Group, one of the largest payments companies in China. 
However, Ant is expected to face major challenges due to increased regulation, specifically regarding their lending business, which was one of Ant's most profitable segments. That said, with large total addressable markets for both Alibaba's retail and cloud businesses, Alibaba still has major growth opportunities even with the financial technology business held back. Aside from retail, cloud, and fintech, Alibaba has a wide variety of growth opportunities in areas including smart logistics, online pharmaceuticals, consumer services, artificial intelligence initiatives, and other businesses as well. Munger also focuses on the competitive advantages or economic moats of the businesses that he invests in. Alibaba's advantages primarily fall into two categories, intangible assets and network effects. Major intangible assets include patents, employee talent, regulatory barriers, and data. Meanwhile, Alibaba's marketplace benefits from classic network effects in which Alibaba's platform becomes more valuable for each buyer and seller that joins. These advantages support Alibaba when it comes to competing against major competitors including Tencent, JD.com, Pinduoduo, and rising competitors such as ByteDance. While competitors have been taking market share from Alibaba over the years, what's important to emphasize is that the e-commerce industry is not zero-sum. With the continuous growth of the overall e-commerce market, this creates room for multiple winners in the industry. In addition to the business itself, Munger makes sure to analyze the management team before investing, which is important for long-term success of the business. When it comes to Alibaba's management, despite the popularity of Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma, Ma stepped down from Alibaba's board in 2019 and no longer serves an executive role in the company. The key members of the management team include Daniel Zhang, the CEO of Alibaba, and Maggie Wu, the CFO of Alibaba, who both have extensive finance work and educational experience. Zhang joined Alibaba in 2007, starting out as the CFO of Alibaba's Taobao Marketplace, rising to Alibaba's COO in 2013, and became the CEO of Alibaba in 2015. Meanwhile, Wu started out as the CFO of Alibaba.com and eventually became the CFO of Alibaba in 2013 and is the head of Alibaba Strategic Investments. When it comes to assessing management, one of Munger's highest priorities is to assess the integrity of management. This is extremely hard to analyze from an outside perspective, but it's likely that Munger had the chance to learn about Alibaba's management directly or indirectly through one of his connections, such as Li Lu, who Munger describes as China's Warren Buffett. Li Lu manages a portion of Munger's wealth through Himalaya Capital, a multi-billion dollar investment firm that invests in the US and Asia. Li Lu has invested in Alibaba before, buying $34 million of Alibaba stock in the first quarter of 2020, so it's a possibility that Munger discussed Alibaba with Li Lu before investing. That said, Munger's investment in Alibaba signals that Munger trusts the management team. The third and final investment principle is allocation, specifically capital allocation. As an investor, the best use of one's capital is always measured by the next best use or opportunity cost. This means that based on this investment decision, Munger believes that Alibaba provides a superior investment opportunity compared to other major technology companies such as Facebook, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. In addition to opportunity cost, Munger emphasizes that good investment ideas are rare, and when the odds are greatly in your favor to bet heavily. Based on the portfolio of the Daily Journal Corporation, we can see that Munger has a concentrated stock portfolio. The portfolio only has six stocks, which includes Bank of America, Wells Fargo, US Bancorp, POSCO, BYD, which is listed overseas, and now Alibaba, which represents one of the portfolio's largest positions. While Munger is extremely patient with his investments, sometimes waiting years before buying a stock, he isn't afraid to bet big when he finds a major investment opportunity. Following the stock market crash of 2008, Munger bought stock in major financial companies which traded at substantial discounts due to the market sell-off. Following the financial crash, Munger's investments in these financial companies, including Bank of America and Wells Fargo, have increased significantly in value. After waiting over six years, Munger has made a major investment again, this time in Alibaba, following the 30% plus decline in the stock following the company's regulatory uncertainty. Munger is taking advantage of investors' fears regarding Alibaba, allocating an estimated 10-19% to of the Daily Journal Corporation's portfolio to the company at a cost basis between $225 and $270 per share. Since Munger focuses on the long-term fundamentals of businesses that he invests in, he focuses less on what the stock may do in the coming weeks, months, or even years. 
Instead, as seen through both the Daily Journal Corporation and Berkshire Hathaway, Munger prefers to hold his investments for multi-year or even multi-decade long time periods as long as the business quality remains high. My Berkshire Hathaway stock cost me $16 a share, and it's now selling for almost $300,000 a share. That's been a very good investment. It took a long time, and it was a long-term investment where I liked the people I was investing with, and I liked the com companies I was investing in, and I just sat there for more than 50 years, and lo and behold, it's worked out very well. Now, could Munger potentially be wrong with Alibaba? With the number of risks that Alibaba presents, this is a possibility. However, through his investment in Alibaba, Munger has signaled that Alibaba could potentially present an attractive long-term investment opportunity. Subscribe to stay updated for new videos and comment down below what you think about Alibaba.